Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. You know the drill. We're back at the creek on Saturday night. We've got 10 races, and it's a good program. The Inner Dominion is fast approaching. ID 23. The highlight race for me on this card on Saturday night is the trot race. So there's several Queensland contenders stepping out. Mobile start conditions over 2,138 metres. That is going to be the highlight race. But as far as the free-for-all paces are concerned, Black Sedan, second up, gets barrier one. Can he hold up? Can he take them all the way? Can he get close to his own track record, which currently sits at 49-2? We'll get all those answers on Saturday night and a whole lot more in this edition of Weekend Winners. We're going to speak with Adam Sanderson and Matty Elkins. Adam Sanderson now joins us to go through his book of drives for Saturday night at Albion Park. Adam, appreciate the time. No worries, mate. Uh, let's go through them. Race one, number one, Noble Trick. This is your first drive, uh, a pickup drive here for Ricky Thurlow. But this is a good draw for him, and I don't think he's going to be too far away. No, he seems like, um, you know, he's a nice horse. He, he's sort of been racing well, and, and the draw sort of certainly aids his chances. So, um, you know, it's a nice pickup drive. You've got plenty of options to your outside. He's a horse that probably would look for cover in a race like this. So any amount of options, the Grogfather probably being the most obvious. Yeah, he's always a go forward horse. But, um, you know, I think a few starts ago, he led and took a trail and, and, and went up the lane. So um, anything that can uh, we think that can get us there will be um, certainly uh, on our radar. Yeah, the fence is a good spot to be at this level of racing at Albion Park too. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's always, um, especially on a Saturday night, they go quick and, and shortest way home is always, um, you know, always generally the key. OK, well, that's noble trick in race number one. What about in race two? You're drawn out here. You're driving so am I for Sean and Michelle Grimsey. Uh, he's a capable type, but you've got a way we go who's likely to be favourite, drawn barrier one at the mile. So how do you sort of play it here from gate six? Uh, it actually, you know, it looks quite a strong field. Um, you know, away we go is always a, you know, a front-running type and... and uh, he, he's sort of out of form, but um, it sort of looks the race where he can he can bounce back to form. So uh, he was a good last start winner, but um, I think he's probably up against it tonight. Okay. So are you going forward, or do you just sort of float off the arm and then sort of see how much speed you've got to your inside early? Uh, there does sort of look to be a, a little bit of speed early, so um, it'll just be a, you know, wait till the gate goes and, and assess it. Okay. He is versatile, so you don't have to drive him in a particular manner. No, exactly right. I, I've driven a couple of times, and, he, and he's gone good both times um you know i didn't want to sit one time and set park the other time so um you know he's definitely a you know a versatile type mm. they do a good job with their horses don't they sean and michelle grimsey yeah always on the mark they always look good and um you know always race well so the team's are uh, going really well lately all right well that's so am i going around in race number two let's go across to race four keen to get your thoughts here this is a high quality trot race mobile start conditions Jack of Watch, you've combined with this guy for feature race glory. Uh, he draws well here when many of the major players are drawn either wide or off the second row. How do you sort of line up Jack of Watch? Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's sort of, I think he, he raced last week and he'll be second up. So um, I'm sure whatever he does said that he'll improve. But he's always, um, he's a consistent type. And um, as you say, he won, won over the Winter Carnival in, in good fashion. So I can't see why he can't sort of press forward and, and, and force the issue here. Gate speed. How much gate speed do you think he's got? Um, I think I drove him one other time from a mobile, and he, and he felt like he'd be he'd be sort of sharp enough. So, um, you know, I'm pretty sure he'd be he'd be well well and truly capable. Okay, my ultimate Eddie one indefensible two. Enough speed to cross those pair. I think he, he crossed the one. I'm not I'm not sure about the two. But, you know, it, it can do a little bit wrong out of the gate too. So. Um, it's, it's usually a go-forward type, so um, it, it might be interesting, that first 100. Yeah, just looking back at that replay, he hit the line well last week, didn't he? Yeah, he did. You know, he, he had a nice soft run, and, um, you know, Shane was pretty soft on him. He, he sort of didn't have much luck at that, the last 800, but, you know, as you said, hit the line strong. All right, so he's capable here? Yeah, you know, I, I think whatever he does, he'll improve on, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple of likely types, and if, if Adele sort of brings her... Her A game, she's um, she's in the mood at, at this stage. It just looks unbeatable. Okay, uh, race six on Saturday night. Here's a mare that's in good form, Miss Mucho for Ron Sellers. She's drawn two off the second row. This is a hot field. There's several that are in form, but how does she line up for you? Uh, she's probably you know not far behind these ones. As you say, it's 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 a really good field, and um, you know she's a consistent type. But she she might just lack a you know a little bit of class of what a couple do. But she's always um, she's always putting 110 in. 
Okay, you've got options here from uh, two off the second row. You can either drop straight to the to the fence or stay in that one wide line. So you've got plenty of options soon after the start. Yeah, exactly. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of know our fate after 100 where um, where we end up. All right, with big skewy drawn one, you know you're going to run it hard. Yeah, generally, you know, um, he's, he's not a sort of gate speed. Also, whether he gets crossed at the start, um, you know, that, that's a likely scenario. So as you say, we'll just... Um, We'll know after 100. Yeah, good point there. Uh, race number eight, She's Got Bling. She comes up with a nice draw, gate two. Can she be a threat here? Um, she's, she's always sort of consistent enough. You know, she's a one-trick pony. She she needs luck, and she has a short, sharp sprint. Um, whether there's a couple of, couple of mares here that might be a little bit sharp for her, um, you know, she's been racing well, so it's just a matter of a, if a mare's in form, if she can keep that. Th this seems to be an ideal draw for her, though, too, where you don't have to use her early and she can just maintain her position in the moving line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, every sort of time I've driven her, she's, she's drawn bad and, and still gone good races, so it'd be nice to um, you know, hopefully posse up and, and be in sort of in striking distance. All right, the last race. This is the uh, the stand start. Swaggy Shannon, he's drawn uh, three, so he's off the front line. Uh, can he prove to be a bit of a spoiler here? Uh, I thought he was, a, you know, I didn't drive him last week, but I thought he, he's sort of on face value, he's a bit disappointing. So um, he, he's generally got good manners and um, these stands are sort of, they're, they're an open contest where he can sort of step to the front and it might sort of be a, a race where he, he can step and sort of run along and, and make them back markers chase a little bit. So we'll just play it by ear, but um, he, he sort of needs to find it a little bit more lately. Okay, 2100, does that help in comparison to 26? I think so. I think that might have sort of been you know, why he just sort of didn't finish off as good last week. But um, as I say, he's generally got good manners, so he can, he can put himself in a good spot. All right. Which driver are you most looking forward to? Uh, sort of just got, you know, so-so drives there. They're sort of all, you know, rough chances without sort of being standout. So um, just hopefully one of them right. can do me good. All right. So you're just gearing up for the summer carnival and inter campaign. Hopefully there's some uh, more strike power there. Yeah, you know, um, hopefully, um, you know, Roboki team comes back as good as they were over the winter carnival, so um, plenty to look forward to. Awesome. Appreciate the time. We'll see you at Trackside. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Matty Elkins now joins us to go through his drives on Saturday night. Matty, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Pleasure as always. Uh, you've picked up the drive on Tim Z in race two. This is a good pickup drive because he looks like he's got the hoof right on the till. However, you've got a way we go likely favourite, drawn barrier one, and it's only a mile. Yeah, no, nah, um... So I know how well he's racing last week. I was sort of five fence and he was four fence and I followed him into the race and we both just missed there in that QO. So I don't know he's racing well, but as you said, the draw is a little tricky in three with speed to our inside and speed to our outside. So how do you play that early then from gate three? Um, I think we're just going to have to make it up as the gate goes. As you said, away we go, he looks the clear leader. Um, whether Argo wants to kick up or not, not too sure. We we'll just have to play that by ear. And, and you've also got Daniel Boom outside us, which will probably want to drive forward. So if you end up outside of Away We Go, do you want to hold that spot or you're, you're hoping for cover? Um, gauging off his run last week, you know, back along the fence, I'd say we'd be pretty happy with 1-1. One, one. All right. Well, that's Tim Z, race two. He's number three. Can you get your thoughts here on Rock Tagonal in race three? One of your own. He was really good last week, an eye catcher. Yeah, he's got the hoof on the till. Um, he cannot get a marble at the moment. He keeps drawing out six and seven every week and we're sort of going back and he's getting some bad trips and bad luck, but he's racing real well and he is ready to win. Okay, so again, you've got a wide draw here. So are you going back? Yeah, I'd say we'll go back and look for some gaps and hopefully we get a bit more luck this week. Okay. Has he been frustrating since joining your stable or is it more the frustration because of the, the, uh, the, or the no luck with draws? Um, I think... There was only one night I was actually, or well, two nights I was disappointed with him, but he had a couple little issues and we've sort of got on top of them and I've been happy ever since, but sort of the week we get the draw, I'll be pretty happy and excited. Okay. So just with this race on Saturday night, the key runner in many ways is Kadar, who's got the inside gate. Do you think it's any weaker or stronger than what you met last week? Um, to me, it looks a pretty open field. Uh, I don't know a lot about Kadar and it's drawn one, so it's obviously going to be pretty hard to beat, but... Apart from it, I'd say they're a pretty even bunch and no real standouts. Okay. Well, that's race three. Race four, this is going to be probably the best race of the night. This is the mobile trot, Majestic Lavros. Couldn't have been any more impressive first up. That was back in early September. Uh, he goes into this race fresh and he's got the inside of the second row draw. So it's not <laughs> ideal. How do you sort of line this race up on the weekend? Well, I guess there's plenty of different scenarios, but I think it may turn ugly. Um, you know, Maldonado is racing really well, and 
improved a lot lately. Um, but in barrier one, he did hold up from there last time, but I think that was um, the circumstances of plenty of overlaps to the outside. And sort of this week, you got sugar and spice off the front. So I'd say it'll be touching down pretty early. And a horse like Lisa Carlson also has good early gate speed. Okay. Are you concerned that there's such a big gap between runs? Uh, not really. Um, you know, we probably didn't want to race from then on into the Inters either. So we probably did need a little break there somewhere. So um, hopefully all going ahead now, race Saturday and keep stepping forward to the Inters, hopefully. All right. I've got to ask the question. So when he won first up, he went 56 and change on the front end. In his trials, he looks so explosive coming off cover. Is he better in front or chasing something down? Uh, I couldn't really gauge on it yet. Um, we might learn a bit more about that Saturday night, but pretty dirty. I went a 32 quarter on him that night. He went the mile in 56. Uh, <laughs> I wish I rolled a little bit quicker and give that track record a nudge, but no, I don't think it's really going to bother him either way in front or following. Okay, so it's not it's not the end of the world with this draw, given that he can peel and run a really quick quarter. No, that's right. And, you know, 2100 metre mobile, um, we are first up off a of freshen up, so it's probably not the worst thing to sit on the fence and see if something opens up late. Who's the horse to beat in this race, in your opinion? It's a hard one. Um, if it was a mile, I'd say Sugar and Spice could probably lead and nearly win. Um, the 21, not real sure if it sees it out in front. You've also got Gus there off the front. He may make a play early. Uh, Mulder Manetti is racing well. And then that whole second line, you know, if the race is run to suit and whichever one gets the best trip, any one of them could win as well. Okay, that's a good race. Race number four, your drive, Majestic. Lavros, what about in race five? You're with Music Moth. How did you gauge her last week? Uh, the last two weeks, she's been a victim of circumstances. We've run the gate and haven't found the front and got in behind the leader and it hasn't helped to see the time. So um, she is racing well, better than her form looks. Um, we just need a few things to go her way. Do you think you can lead here or does she's a cracker park you? Um, I think we may be getting parked again, but you know we'll roll forward and see what happens. She is going to win one of these races, though, isn't she? Yeah, definitely. And sort of the thing when she has got behind the leader, it doesn't suit her in on the fence either because she likes to run out a bit. So, um, you know, maybe sit one one or something like that would be a better go for her. All right, race six. This is a key drive. This is a good field as well. Big Skewy. He is fit. He's in form, and he's got barrier one. First and foremost, has he got the speed to lead? I don't think so. Who are you most worried about? Um, there's probably a few there that can cross. Um, Classy Washington gets out well. I think Lords of Ice has a bit of speed. And, you know, the race probably does depend on high voltage, what it does early. So what do you do uh, if you get crossed early? It's going to be tactical and have to think pretty fast. Um, we're just going to have to see what is getting across us and what is going to be the leader. Um, if the scenario is there to get off, um, we probably will look to take that. Has he surprised you in any way with these thumping times that he's been able to run? Well, I probably do get carried away with him a little bit, but I did always say I can't wait till the day I drive him hard. I think he'll keep running. And, you know, the way he's done it every week more so is probably what's impressed me the most. You know, he just turns up every week and does it the hard way and just keeps thumping him out. Okay. Recently, you qualified him from a stand. So is that with a view uh, for those stand start races that we're starting to see each and every Saturday night now? Yeah, definitely. You know, once these horses get to band four, it gets pretty tricky. It's sort of one week you're in the open race and the other week it's a band four to two random barrier draw. And if you're a band four and you're meeting band twos at random barrier draw, it gets pretty hard. And he does lack a bit of gate speed, as we all know. So I really do think the stands will suit him and I'd love to get him in, uh, in one over 2,600 one week. OK, so just on how he stepped uh, in that trial, was that a, a big tick for you? Yeah, pretty happy. Um, Pretty confident he'll get away pretty well. He's sort of free legs at home and pretty cruisy customer. So I think it really will suit him and probably made for him. Okay, well, that's Big Skewy lining up in a race number six. Which drive are you most looking forward to on the weekend? Well, I'm looking forward to Big Skewy and Majestic Lavros. You know, they're probably the best two winning chances. But as far as the best bet goes, we'll go Rock Tagonal the place. Okay, Rock Tagonal the place. That's race three, number six. I like it. Hey, Matty, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. No worries, thank you.
A big thumbs up to both our drivers, Adam Sanderson and Matty Elkins, giving up their time and insights ahead of their drives on the weekend. We wish them all the very best of luck. Time now for a good thing on Saturday night. We're going to strike early. We came up a little short last week with Rosberg. Hopefully we go one better this weekend because I'm really keen on race two, number one, away we go. Conditions for him on Saturday night, they're tailor-made. He's got barrier one, he's got the speed to lead, he goes best in front. But importantly, he's back at a mile. Last couple of runs have been at 2,138 metres. I think he definitely goes best at the mile. So leader Peter, he takes them all the way. Race two, number one, away we go. Hopefully he can uh, get the job done. We might even multi him up with a few other races uh, throughout the evening. It's a good 10 race program. We kick off the action at 5.47. We'll see you trackside Saturday night at Albion Park.